today we're going to be wiring a forward and reverse control circuit for this motor starter here are the components not much to it so let's identify components before we start wiring first component is our stop this is our, going to be our stop push button next we have our forward push button here's our forward and it's going to be this guy and then we're going to have our forward coil and here's our forward contactor and the coils right there a1 and a2 there's the coil and then we have the overload there's the overload and 96 and 95 are the contacts that we are going to be tying into our contactors continuing on we have a reverse push button I have a labeled here reverse and this is going to be the reverse push button and then we're going to be using set of normally close contacts from our reverse contactor terminals 21 and 22 and here's our reverse contactor so we are going to be using the normally close contacts here's normally close 21 and 22 so we will be using those set of contacts and there will be another set of normally closed contacts that we will use on our forward same contacts 22 21 and then we will be using a set of normally open contacts from each of the contactors we will be using auxiliary contacts to keep themselves latched in and they will be 54 and 53. as you can see on the contactors here we have auxiliary contacts 53 and 54 53 and 54 we will be using both of these normally open contacts to keep the latched in and then there is a mechanical interlock between these two set of contacts so that if the forward contact is actuated or if the coil is energized it mechanically locks it so that the reverse coil cannot be energized and vice versa if this is energized that cannot be energized and this mechanical interlock is located in between both of these contacts you can't really see it but like i said if this contactor is engaged this one cannot engage this one is engaged this one cannot engage and that mechanical interlock is just another safety measure to ensure that the forward and the reverse cannot both be on at the same time all right so we got all of the components identified and highlighted we can then start wiring all right so we have our first wire here running a wire this is going to be wire number one and it's going to be terminated right into our stop button okay so i have wire number one wired into our stop button and that is that wire right there wire number one next time we're going to move to wire number two and coming out from the stop button wire number two parallels out to one two three four so you have four wires coming out from the stop button. So I am not gonna shove four wires into the stop button and then parallel it out. So I'm gonna send one wire from the stop button over to this terminal block. All the terminal blocks that are labeled two here are jumpered together so that they share the same common. So I am gonna send a wire over here coming out from the stop button to make these all the same all right so i got wire number two coming out from our stop button and it terminates to the terminal block label number two so now since these are jumpered together these all share the same potential they're all the same so then this wire here is terminated and now we're going to put a wire from that terminal block to the forward push button and then here we have uh, another wire coming from terminal block two and it's wired into one side of our forward push button 
So now we have this wired, wired into our forward push button. And then we're going to bring another wire from terminal block number two to the normally open set of contacts on our auxiliary contact from our starter. And here's our next wire coming from terminal block two also. And that terminates to the normally open auxiliary contact, terminal 54, on our auxiliary contacts. So we have this wired in now. So we'll go ahead and highlight that wire. And then next up is this wire. It's going to be going to one side of our reverse push button. Now we got that terminated. Another wire coming from terminal block two, right to our reverse push button. So that is this wire right here. And then now we're gonna run one more to the normally open set of contacts from our reverse contactor, terminal 54. And then here's our reverse contact. And you can see terminal 54 has got a wire terminated to it. And that wire comes from another wire from terminal block two. And then that completes this. So now we have all of wire, wire number two paralleled out accordingly. Next up, we will wire in wire number three from our forward push button to uh, the normally closed set of contact on our reverse contactor. So here's a wire terminated into terminal 22, which is the normally closed auxiliary contacts on our reverse contactor. And we have a wire terminated in and that wire runs back from our forward push button and our forward push button has another wire that parallels out from um, the normally open contacts on the forward contactor so we're gonna we're not gonna tighten down this screw yet we're gonna run a parallel wire another wire number three that parallels out to this contact or terminal 53 on the contactor of the forward contactor okay so coming out from terminal 53 on our forward contactor i got a wire running back paralleling from our forward push button so here we have completed terminating this wire and this wire next up we are going to go wire in wire number four from our reverse uh, auxiliary contact, terminal 21, right over to our coil. Terminal 21 on our reverse contactor, then comes over right to A1 side of our forward contactor. That wire is now terminated. So we can go ahead and cross off wire number four. And then coming out from A2 of our contactors, is wire number five and we're gonna wire that directly to terminal 96 on our overload contactor the normally closed one um, these two side of a2 on our contactor coils are linked together you can see here a2 and a2 on both our contactors they're linked together through this jumper here so they share the same continuity so you can see A2, we have our wire number four coming to 96, the normally closed contact on our overload. So by bringing this around, it's gonna do the same for this one, A2 on our forward, because again, they are connected. So that completes wire number five, and it completes the same for a reverse side because they are joined. And then we are gonna run another wire, wire number zero, back to the comm side of our power source. So here we have wire number zero coming out from terminal 95 on our overload. And that runs back all the way to the comm side and it's labeled zero on the terminal block. So that wire is now complete. Now it's time to do the same for our reverse push button. We're gonna parallel two wires out from our reverse push button to terminal 53 on our normally open auxiliary contact on our starter, reverse starter. And we are gonna bring a wire to terminal 22 on our forward normally closed contacts. 
All right, so coming out from our reverse push button, we have one wire that terminates to 22, terminal 22 on our forward contactor. And then we have another wire paralleling out to terminal 53 on our reverse contactor. So coming out from our reverse push button, we have two wires that I just showed. One goes out to 22 and one comes out to 53 on our reverse contactor. And then let's finish this up with wire number seven coming out from terminal 21 of our forward normally closed contact and terminating to A1 of our reverse coil. So let's get that wire number seven terminated. And where we have terminal 21 on our forward contactor and that's the wire that goes over to A1 right on our reverse contactor. So we do have our controls all wired up and this is how it looks like. So let's hook up the power supply to it. We'll test it and then eventually we will hook up the power side and run a load. Okay, power supply is hooked up and we are ready to dry run it. So first I'm gonna hit our forward forward engages reverse is not engaged and now I'm gonna try to reverse it you can see the interlocking mechanism will not allow it the reverse contactor to engage while forward is engaged and then we stop it if you watch we stop it now the forward disengages and now we can come and reverse it reverse is now engaged you can see it move from here to over here and now if we try to start our forward, you can see that the forward will not engage no matter what we do. Test our overload. All right, so this is the final part to this three part series. We finished wiring up our control. Now we are, have wired in our power circuit and we are ready to test run the motor. We have my three phase power coming in. This brown wire comes to L1 orange comes to L2 and the yellow wire comes to L3. So we have these wires here terminated and we have brown coming to L1, orange coming to L2 and yellow coming to L3. And if you look from the back here these forward and reverse contactors they come with these jumpers that will bridge them together so L run power to L1, 2, and 3 on our forward contactor and it bridges over to our reverse contactor so we also have L1, 2, and 3. We don't need to run separate wiring over here. It bridges over from these set of wirings from the forward contactor. So then now we have L1 on our reverse contactor, L2 on our reverse contactor and L3. Again, they all bridge from our forward contactor. And then we also have our T1, 2, and 3 wires that goes out to the motor. So we have T1, T2, T3, and they all go through the overload. You can see they come out from the overload. T1, 2, 3 is connected right here and they go out to the motor from the overload. And then the wiring on our reverse side again, the contactors come in with um, these bridges that will jump power from T1, 2, and 3 over to our reverse contactor. And on the T1, 2, and 3 side of our reverse contactor is where the magic happens, where the reversing happens. If you can see here, L1 is connected to L1, 2 is connected to 2, and 3 is also connected to 3 on our incoming power side. Now on our output side, 1 is now connected to 3. T2 remains the same 
and T3 is now connected to T1. So on our output side, T1 and T3 are now swapped. So we are pretty much swapping the brown and the yellow wire on a reverse contactor through these jumper bridges. We are swapping them around and that is how we get the motor to reverse when the reverse contactor is energized. So we have all of our power circuits identified and wired in. We are ready for a test run. All right, we have control voltage connected to our terminal block. So now we have control voltage established. We also have incoming power, main power to our contactor established and we are ready to rock and roll. So we're gonna go ahead and test it in forward. Now we are in forward and notice with reverse, we cannot put the motor in reverse because we have the mechanical and the electrical interlock that prevents the motor from reversing when it's already in forward. We would have to come and stop it and then we can go in reverse. As you can see that the motor is now in reverse and we can no longer try to start it in the forward. So let's go ahead and stop it. Put it back in forward and stop. And that completes this series of the forward and reverse motor control circuit. Until next time, deuces.